rock and roll. Hello, cadets. Welcome to another episode of the Big Monster Briefing Room. Uh, we are uh, doing the uh, Godzilla movie, uh, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, um, or in some say Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Uh, again, back back in the day when this movie first came out, they said uh, King Ghidorah. Uh, so it was actually misspelled on the posters in America for the longest time, G-H-I-D-R-A-H. Um, and it's Ghidorah. So in any case, uh, we'll talk about this, uh, in just a bit with, uh, with our guests. Um, we were supposed to have a guest unite Godzilla fans on the show. Uh, unfortunately, right before the show, he was in a fender bender, uh, and sent me a message saying he was waiting for the police. He didn't think he was going to make it, but you never know. Maybe he'll pop in hopefully, uh, later in the show, uh, and say hi. Uh, we'll see. Uh, he's got the link. Um, so let me bring up my able body assistant, actually assistants, Major Hazard and Sergeant Havoc. Hello, General. Very good. Um, again, this movie is um, the first Toho film uh, that was kind of a monster mashup where they had um, uh, more than one. They had Godzilla. They had Rodan. They had Mothra, all of their main hits. Uh, and they threw in a new space monster, uh, uh, King Ghidorah, uh, which uh, I think made like five movies in the Shawa series, uh, four after this one, uh, came back for uh, Monster Zero, uh, which was the next year, then Destroy All Monsters, then um, uh, Godzilla vs. Gigan. Uh, so that's three. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he was on a TV show, uh, The Zone Fighter. He was a, did a guest shot on Zone Fighter. And Godzilla did a guest shot on that show, too. Um, so uh, he, he is he is a go-to, uh, like, like Mecha Godzilla, he is a go-to villain. Uh, they use him a lot. Uh, he's in the MonsterVerse here in America. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, Hazard, you disappeared awfully quickly. Where did you go? I just had the wrong name tag on, but it's okay. And I wanted to put a little oh, banner okay. here to remind everyone what we're talking about. We're talking about Ghidorah. So we got a little banner, a little, you know, some, Jesus <laughs> some sophistication here, that kind yeah. of thing. Ghidorah, Ghidorah. 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 Ghidorah, Ghidorah. Let's call the whole thing off. Get out of Ghidorah. here. I love the fact that this is a, a Criterion collection. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, they went all fancy there. Go. Uh, this is actually, I, this, I screenshot the uh, Japanese version uh, because it was, you know, a, a, a high quality uh, version of the film. Uh, I've watched it in both languages. Uh, we start out in the opening credits right away with shots of Godzilla and Rodan and, uh, and such and Mothra and everything. So um, uh, you get a sense right away that this is going to be a big monster, uh, uh, monster fest. Unfortunately, there's a lot of human uh, <laughs> story to this one. So the Monster Fest doesn't come until later in the film. Yep. So it's late at night. Uh, this is a scientific uh, astronomy kind of uh, society. They're looking for uh, uh, falling stars, uh, asteroids. And uh, one of the, the news reporter, her name is Shindo, uh, comes in and asks him, you know, uh, 
why why didn't this work out the way you guys had hoped? You know, where, where where's the where's what where's the uh, meteors and such? Um, and he does not like her tone, her attitude, the guy that's the head of it, and then the meteor comes down. So you see, Meh. so one of those things. Now her brother is actually a detective, Detective Shindo. Uh, this guy is uh, Yosuka uh, Natsuki. Uh, we we had uh, uh, Linda Miller on the show uh, a couple times, uh, and she actually uh, dated this guy for a while. He was kind of like Elvis back in that time. Uh, wow. Yeah, he was pretty. He was a pretty uh, well well known uh, TV and movie star. So um, she said he was very, very gentleman. He was, he was a gentleman, a very nice guy, had sports cars, the whole nine yards. You know, just a, a wonderful time, she said she had with him. Uh, so in any case, um, uh, he hasn't appeared in many Godzilla films. He appeared in Godzilla 1985 when he was much older as a scientist. Um, and I think that was his last one. Um, <clears throat> now... Um, he has uh, got a new job. His boss says, you have to guard this princess uh, from Saigina. Her name is Princess Selena Salno. Um, and she's played by the, the delicious Akiko Wakabayashi. <laughs> oh, my God. I had such a crush on this girl. She was also in the James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice, um, as Aki. Uh, she actually speaks English pretty well. Um, better than Miyahama, <laughs> who's <laughs> another Japanese actress that's in a lot of these films. And they did a lot of spy movies and other things, you know, at that time, you know, with Toho. Um, now, she gets a message from outer space. The Martians say, you're in grave danger. You need to jump out of this plane now. Trust us. And so she goes, I'm going for a walk. And she, she, <laughs> Pops out of the plane. And she's, again, the ball of light grabs her up and uh, saves her and the plane blows up. Uh, there's some assassins that are trying to kill her because she's a princess. And they want to take over the country, I guess. So. Um, the meteor uh, is uh, Dr. I'm sorry. Yes. Dr. Uh, uh, Tsukamoto. Uh, <laughs> play, played by... Um, Takashi Shimura, who, who plays a lot of doctors in these films. And the year before he played a doctor, uh, and again, that involved Mothra and Godzilla fighting. Um, and uh, again, we, we've, we've had two monsters fighting up until this film, and now there's four monsters fighting. This is a real monster uh, tag team match. So if you don't recognize uh, Shindo's boss there, um, he is, um, give me a second here, uh, Akihiko Harata who played uh, Professor Sarazawa in the very first Godzilla movie. He's the one that created the Oxygen Destroyer. and He's just in about all of these somewhere. <laughs> he's always got a part. Okay. So anyway, uh, he says, it's a shame the uh, the princess has been killed, so your assignment is over. Meanwhile, his sister uh, is uh, going to talk, uh, talk to a uh, person that has popped up who says that she is a Martian and she can predict the future. Uh, and uh, it turns out to be the princess. The princess now is wearing old, dirty clothes from an old band, an honest yeah. fisherman. Yeah, yeah. We meet him later. Yeah, this is this is the part of the movie, or the well, this training film that I thought was like, what, what, what's the point of this? It just sort of takes up a lot of, like, okay. I mean, she makes. Yeah, it's, it's like thirty minutes before we get our first monster, which is Rodan. Is that, yeah, right. yeah. Call him Radon over there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she. Oh man. <laughs> but you know, yep, she easy on she, the eyes she, though. So that's, 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 <laughs> so she says that uh, there's a mountain that's close to there, and there's a dam next to it, and and Rodan's going to show up there. So uh, that's her prediction. So, and that's the news story. Uh, so now sh the Shindos are eating dinner now. And they pop on the telly. Now, this proves one thing. This was 1965. So that means that Japan had color televisions before we did. So, because it wasn't until like 1966, 67 that we started to, to, to mass uh, uh, figure out that uh, um, color TV thing. 
So in any yeah. case, they show their favorite show. It is it's a you know variety show of some kind, and they had two comics uh, are talking to children, and the children go, "We want to see Mothra," <laughs> you know, "We want to see the giant you know worm that almost destroyed our city," <laughs> you know, kids are like that. So uh, these guys actually bring out the Shobijin, which are the two little uh, uh, fairies. Uh, they're about six inches high. And, um, and they're played by uh, a couple of twins, Emi Ito and Yumi Ito. They were a singing act back at that time. And I can see their agent right now going, we have got a great gig for you. <laughs> we're going to be in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh there it is they ended up being in several of these movies yeah. uh uh the last yeah. one again godzilla versus the thing which was uh, mothra versus godzilla because the good guy always gets the top billing uh mothra versus godzilla as it is now known um uh what was i talking about oh the shobijin uh they were dressed up like uh uh, uh jackie kennedy <laughs> which was kind of weird um and then, uh, and then they, they they went back to like the uh, the island outfits, you know, from from the original Mothra movie, and uh, that's what they ended up. And actually, other actresses played them in um, uh, Godzilla versus Ibira, the the sea monster. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I guess I guess they decided they'd had enough of this king. <laughs> <laughs> we want to play normal sized people <laughs> now. When you see, when you think assassin, <laughs> you don't think guys with those things around their necks, like you know, from the sixties. <laughs> like, did they just but go back in time? Is this, <laughs> especially with Jack Nicholson glasses on? Uh, but uh, there it is. Uh, this is Malamud. He was the assassin that set up the uh, airplane explosion, and uh, uh, I, I, we we passed through several slides while I was telling a side story, uh, but in the previous slides. We saw that uh, Shindo saw that there was a newspaper article about the Martian girl, and it was the princess, and he recognized her. So uh, these guys, same thing. They recognized her as well. Uh, so they're going to have to send Malamud now to Japan to, to try and knock her off. So uh, this is actually um, uh, Kenji Sahara uh, playing uh, the editor-in-chief. He's one of those actors that's on all the Godzilla movies somewhere again. Um, and uh, uh, Shindo, the reporter, uh, tells him about the Martian girl being the princess because her brothers, you know, filled her in on that. Uh, even though he's supposed to be like a secret agent detective type, he's not supposed to talk about sensitive information like that. So anyway, uh, so uh, now it's a big, big news story. Uh, you know, this princess is now thinking she's, uh, you know, inhabited by a Martian. And uh, he takes the pictures back to his boss at the detective agency, and he goes, "See, she's still alive. She just she thinks she's she's just gone crazy. <laughs> she thinks she's a Martian now. Well, well you better go in, 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 uh, you better go in and you better go and protect her." And he goes, "Yeah, my sister's going to have an interview with her soon, so I'll go go, go join him." So uh, he calls his sister on the bat phone. I'm kidding. She was calling out. <laughs> oh. Call that was that Gordon. was two years prior to Batman, so I can't say that. The, the, yep, yep, but got the red phone. <laughs> but the red phones were very important at that time. Um, okay, so now they're at the mountain. I want to say it's Mount Asso, but I might be wrong. It might be Mount Apo. Uh, but in any case, uh, this guy, uh, she's there. The Martian girl is there, the princess, and she's saying, Rodan is going to show up here very soon. You need to leave here. And this slideshow is going way too freaking fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and not going back. Uh, in any case, a guy's hat flies out. Another guy um, who is in a lot of these Godzilla movies, uh, uh, he's a comic actor, got a really weird kind of Jim Carrey kind of face. Um, he says, I'll go get your hat for you. And she's like, you got to get up. Don't go down there. Rodan is down there. And he's like, shut up, lady. I'm, I'm trying to make money. <laughs> and then Rodan shows up. So, and now we are, uh, okay. <laughs> Malaman and his men show up. And then uh, they're going to get on a ship. And so yep. the, the fairies are getting on a ship to go back to Mothra Island. And Shindo's there for the story. And uh, there she is. Martian woman shows up again and says, Godzilla is going to attack and destroy this boat. And the captain's like, yeah, there's no icebergs out there. <laughs> so, 
So yeah. uh, Shindo uh, uh, talks to his boss, and there's a there's a gold uh, bracelet the princess is supposed to wear, and she's given it to this honest fisherman who gives it back to the detectives because it's not really his. Although he did trade his clothes for it. And that's where her clothes came from. That's how she got her clothes. This guy is in all all the Godzilla movies somewhere. He's always got a character. He's a cute little old man guy. So um, so they tell him uh, it's a a princess and he picks her out of a lineup. And uh, he sees a picture of her and he goes, that's her. That's her. That's her. Those are my clothes. She looks good in my clothes. (laughs) She looks better without my clothes. Oh, folks, I went there. Anyway. Uh, Akiko Wakabayashi. <laughs> That's why she's zooming through this because she's angry at me because I'm talking about Akiko Wakabayashi. Anyway, so hey, yeah, there it is. And done so pissed off the major. He's, <laughs> he's he's picked out her picture, so now we know. Okay, it's confirmed. It's the princess. She thinks she's a Martian. Now, they go to a hotel, uh, Miss Shindo, the reporter, and the uh, the Martian girl who's in the, the old dirty clothes, and the look on this guy's face working the hotel desk is hysterical. <laughs> he obviously thinks, oh, she's taking her to the room. Okay, all right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's the way he played it. That's I swear yeah. to God, that's the way he played it. Or and he, was... he sees Malamud, and Malamud sees her, and uh, she doesn't really acknowledge him. She just looks over at him, and the gang... Of the four guys, the four ma- bad bad men, uh, they're like, oh, oh, it's a princess. She does not recognize us. She thinks she's something else. She thinks she's a margin. <laughs> <laughs> How so, guys, it just, it, you know, it's just great. That you just happen to be in the same hotel that, that she shows up at. But no explanation. What are the odds? Like, they're just, they're just there. Like, what are the odds? Exactly. What are the odds? Well, Ma- Madeline might be better at this than uh, we thought he was. Maybe so. Maybe so. Uh, Shindo's staying in this hotel. We're going to go there, and I bet you the bridge shows up. So anyway, Godzilla shows up, and he does destroy the boat. And uh, the, uh, the 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 little fairies looked very concerned when the when the Martian lady said, Godzilla's going to show up and destroy this boat. So um, I need to point that out. Because they show up in the hotel room here <laughs> with, with the princess later. Here. Well, actually, here is later now. <laughs> Uh, now, this guy's credit is, okay, let me get this right. His credit is show off door opener assassin because of this scene. That's his credit on IMDb. Yeah, show off he's all door like, opener mm, yeah, assassin. Yeah, How would you like to be a show door opener? Yeah, because he's doing this stuff. Like, mm, yep, yep. So he's a yep. show off. So that, they're going to credit him just like that. Yep. So there it is. And he's picking the lock while she's downstairs talking to uh, her brother. Because uh, he showed up and he's like, look, I got to take care of the princess. And Malmud's saying the same thing right now. We got to take care of the princess. <laughs> yeah. But you in a different take way. Take care? <laughs> I do want to point out, because the, the slides have gone so fast, I didn't get a chance to point this out, that both guys that played Ultraman are in this film. The guy in the black there, over over her shoulder, is the guy that played Ultraman's human character. Now, oh, okay. um, on Doctor Doctor uh, Tsukamoto's uh, team that goes up to the to the, where the, uh, the the meteor the meteor they go up to where the meteor is. The photographer that's almost always over his right shoulder is Ben Ferreira, who played Ultraman in the Ultraman suit. Ah. In the first season. So both the guys that played Ultraman, the, the, the Ultraman character and the Ultraman human guy, they're in this film. Ah, cool. I just want to point that out. Nice. So, and they're both still alive, believe it or not. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so Malamud uh, pulls out a knife. He's, uh, he's trying to see if he can shock her into saying or admitting that he knows them. And she's not going for it. She's like, I'm a Martian. So it's the old insanity ploy, you know, and uh, the show beginner there and they shut off the lights. And then that's when Shindo pops in and Shindo starts shooting because that's what he does. And this guy, you know, for being some kind of special agent, he is the worst freaking shot 
<laughs> I don't think he shoots he looks anybody good. in this whole puts his gun in the holster and when he pulls his gun out, he looks good, but they always end yeah. up getting out the window. Yeah. These 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 bad guys are really good at jumping out windows before they get shot. So uh, she is underneath the uh, fireplace area there. Uh, they turn the lights on. They should just turn the lights back on. The killers are here. <laughs> That's my favorite line in the movie. The killers are here. They say together in stereo. Um, Godzilla attacks. He's he's made it to the shore Fine. now. Back. Finally, finally, yeah. we get some critters. So yeah, it's only like forty minutes in the film. <laughs> yeah, but we finally get some critters. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he looks he looks very Dr. Seuss in this for some reason. He's, he, he looks kind of Muppety. <laughs> yeah, it's it's them googly eyes they put on him. It's, just, it's <laughs> like, yeah, Godzilla ain't menacing at all in this one. <laughs> well, again, they decided at this point, it was 64, they decided in this late 64, they decided, I guess, that we need to market to kids. Because this goes gets real silly in the last half. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and and Mothra, uh, and we'll get there when we get there. But uh, you always got to have a good shot of Mount Fuji, Mount Fuji in your Godzilla yeah. film. Um, yes, this this next part, actually, the whole last half of the film takes place at Mount Fuji. Uh, they go to an institute where they can have uh, the princess checked out to see what is going on in her head. Um, the doctor there is actually the doctor who was in the first Godzilla movie. Um, oh, I got that wrong. Professor Mira is is was the guy at the at the camp. I'm sorry. This is Doctor uh, Tsukamoto. Takashi Shimura was in the first two Godzilla movies, um, and he's also in Frankenstein Conquers the World as as a doctor. Um, so he's checking her out. He's like, I, I can't find anything wrong with her. <laughs> you know, there's perfectly nothing normal. Perfectly normal, yeah. Except, except she thinks she's a Martian. She's a Martian. <laughs> we sound like the Shobajin. <laughs> we're, we're talking in stereo. <laughs> hey, great minds, think alike. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she sits up in bed and says, King Gira is coming. She, she does another premonition, another, uh, she's a king eater is coming. So uh, Godzilla is uh, uh, kind oh, of following no. Rodan. Rodan is, keeps flying over his head and stuff, and Godzilla's kind of following him because he doesn't like another alpha monster in his, in his territory. Uh, and Rodan attacks. And we find out in this film, because Rodan was born from fire, a volcano, that Godzilla's heat ray doesn't really have much of an effect on him. So, and there, there's a thing about tongues in this film. <laughs> Godzilla's tongue is wagging in this film, and Rodan's tongue keeps popping out in this film as well. Uh, so, uh, there are puppets <laughs> fighting. Okay, so here we're back at the camp, and uh, something's happening outside. The 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 picks and axes, uh, and the metal stuff is going back towards the the meteor again. Uh, happened early in the film, but we kind of went past that part. Um, not very exciting. Uh, the the meteor starts yeah, shooting yeah. out uh, um, fireworks, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah, it's, it's all sparky. Uh, and a big fireball f comes up out of it. It cracks open. A big fireball comes at it. And that fireball forms into King Ghidorah. As uh, Professor Mira and his uh, team watch. Yeah. And uh, King Ghidorah has three heads that look like... Uh, which one is Kukla, Kukla, Fran, and Ollie? Ollie's the, the <laughs> it's like the dragon, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like Ollie. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit, yep. And uh, he's actually that... very impressive. I, I, I tell you, of all the suit actors in, in Toho, I feel those, I feel sorriest. For the guy that had to play King Ghidorah. <laughs> yeah. Because he's always suspended on wires. His tail's being worked by wires. His wings are being worked by wires. He's being suspended by wires. And he has no arms. So he has to sit in the King Ghidorah. The King Ghidorah's chest is actually this guy's folded arms inside that suit. Inside that rubber suit. Yeah. <laughs> that must always have been his legs really kicking. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm King Ghidorah. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're got flying them around on wires. It's got <laughs> got to be a, a real cakewalk. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So can you imagine being hung up by wires like that, like this? No. Can I go to lunch now? I gotta oh. pay. I gotta pay. <laughs> All right. So King Ghidorah comes in, and he's I like Rodan. You know, he flies past buildings, and they just bl blow apart. You know, he's got that yeah. wind thing action. Now we don't realize at this point yet. They have laser beams that shoot out of all three mouths, which is extremely destructive. But okay, the big, the big, uh, it's it's not NATO, but it's kind of like that for Japan. Uh, the big council meeting, uh, you know, they're talking about uh, all these monsters that are in the area. What are we gonna do? And this new one that showed up uh, looks very particularly dangerous. The fight between Rodan and Godzilla ramps up. Rodan looks very different in this, by the way, uh, from his original Rodan. Uh, the beak looks more like a bird's beak. It's kind of arced downward a little bit. Yeah. Um, the the wings and the and the chest are pretty much the same. He's got the spiky chest still, and he's still got the big wings. But uh, but yeah, they they change the head quite a bit. And this is what uh, I'm sorry, Ray, Rodan Radon uh, would look like uh, through the '60s and. Uh, and we never saw him in the 70s, in the shower or the next. Uh, we, we didn't see him again until uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 93, 1993. And then he really changed. <laughs> they changed him a lot. <laughs> that yeah. was known as Fire Rodan. So, again, he's born of fire. And uh, uh, in the in the MonsterVerse uh, uh, film, you know, he comes right out of Volcano and, and his wings are, there's, there's, there's like flames coming off of his wings. All the time. So, yeah, Godzilla's firing at him with his breath and nothing is happening. He's just shaking it off. Oh, you think that hurts? Yeah, I, 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 I bathe in that. Come on. <laughs> so he's pecking Godzilla's head. <laughs> yeah, look at that face. <laughs> Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? <laughs> I'm going to live in a trash can. I'm going to live in a volcano. Yes, yes, very. You know, if United Godzilla fans had been here, he could have held me back from stuff like that. <laughs> I guess he could have reeled me back in. No, come on, General. Stop it. Don't don't make fun of Godzilla now. That, that's, that's right. <laughs> You're going to piss off our friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, they're on TV in this this thing, and uh, uh, the Shin, Shindo and Mira show up with the little two Shobijin, and the guys, the, the bad guys are in a diner, and they're like, "Hey, <laughs> that's the princess. That's that's the gangs that are hanging out with the princess." So yeah, they're listening carefully, and they and they, of course they give away their position right away, and then these guys know where to go. <laughs> yep. Um. So uh, the, the, the council members ask the Shobijin, can you get Mothra involved? Can you get Mothra to help? And they're like, Mothra's just a little baby. And then, of course, we get Ghidorah doing a flyby. And we see the beams. Beep. Doing all the sound effects. So here was the gag at that time. The gag at that time was they were destroying uh, places that the audiences in Tokyo would recognize, like immediately. And that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the, oh, oh, I know that. That's the, the oh, oh, Tokyo Tower. Uh. <laughs> so Gator is destroying all these uh, familiar places. Uh, in one case, it was a theater, <laughs> like a, the biggest movie theater in Tokyo. And the people that watched the film at that time, they laughed really hard when Gator destroyed the theater when they were in it. <laughs> King Ghidorah. Um, so the Shobujin agree to uh, do their little song. Uh, Akira Ifagubi, uh, this is one of his best scores, but in my opinion, it's probably the worst fairy song <laughs> of the bunch. 
I'm sorry. It's just really sad sounding. <laughs> Sounds so sad that the, the monster's like, okay, all right, come on, I'm coming. Jeez. <laughs> Man, just don't sing that song again. And they actually, they, they even have some translation of it as, as somebody's, at least version I saw, as someone is translating it, like, well, this is what they're singing. <laughs> okay. So the guy there, I've noticed it, it, both times when they sing the song and they show the cave where Mothra is, there's one guard at the cave opening. <laughs> see him? You see yeah. him? There's one guy guarding over this whole festivity here. Yep. Yeah. So that guy must be a real badass. This is one one guard, and he's there. And then Mothra's like, "Yeah, okay, I'm coming." Jeez, hate this song. Why do you always sing this song? So, so okay, back at the lab, they're like, "Well, you know, what do we do next?" Hey, I know. Let's try some electrocution on her brain. Yeah. Let's do some electroshock therapy. A little shock therapy. That'll, that'll cure. I'm shock around to be in this Martian thing. <laughs> that'll shock the Martian out of her. <laughs> shock the Martian. Shock the Martian. So, uh, so the guys, Malamud and the gang, show up at the, at the place because they talked about it on the television uh, like idiots. <laughs> uh, they show up and they come in through the window. They love windows. They like they like, come and go through windows. Yep. So they come in and uh, uh, the guy's going to shoot Shindo and Malamud stops him because he sees that he's, he's got the, he's doing the electricity thing. And he goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is going to be beautiful. We'll, we'll turn up the uh, electric. We're going to electrocute her and make it look like they did it. So smart assassin. So the farmers are outside, are watching Godzilla and Rodan go at it. And Rodan has um, got the upper hand at this point. Yep. And uh, Rodan actually picks Godzilla up and flies him into the sky, which is fun. <laughs> and then uh, right when they're ready to zap her, <laughs> and it's all the way up, Battlement has turned it all the way up to the top. Um, up to 11. Like drops Godzilla <laughs> and drops him on the electrical tower uh, to this place. So the breaker popped. There he goes. Yeah. But what I was going to say earlier was this is uh, one of Ifakubi's best scores. Uh, he's created a new Rodan theme, which is kind of like a, the monster fight theme now. Uh, mm -hmm. When all the monsters get together and fight, they play this. Da -na -na -na. Yeah, so that's the that's kind of like the fight theme now. And it's but it's Rodan's theme. Because if a could be brought it back uh for the 93 Rodan, Fire Rodan when he when he appeared. Um so that's a cool song. It's a really good song. And uh I tried to find it for our advertisements for the show. I couldn't find it on Instagram. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube, but it's not on Instagram. All right. Uh, so the power goes out. And Shinda goes out to check. And, of course, he runs right into Malamud and all of his gang. Ah! And, again, he shoots. and doesn't. I, I think he hits one of them in the, in the arm. Yeah. And uh, he's shooting back and forth. They're shooting back and forth. And these guys are jumping out the window again. Because that's what they do. They're really good at jumping out windows. <laughs> yeah. Because... You know, they, they, they could have taken their time because this guy's a terrible, terrible shot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to shoot Mar uh, Professor Mara when he came in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here comes Mara and the, 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 the poor Shobijin. They have to carry him around in a box. That's got to suck. Are you in there? <laughs> They're being jostled around. Ah, <laughs> this is why we don't come to Japan anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they bang my head again. <laughs> and they, they like lock them in. You know, there's like a little peg thing that they put in there to lock them in so they can't get out. Now, I understand why they did that in the first Mothra movie, because they were imprisoned. <laughs> but in, 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 in Mothra versus Godzilla and this one, they shouldn't be locking them in a case. 
It's just easier for us to carry them around, you know. It's like a Barbie case. Exactly. <laughs> so, all right. So anyway, uh, the, the, the villains uh, hustle out of there uh, because Mara hits one of them over the head with a, with a wrench. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they decide, hey, let's take the princess and go for a ride. Godzilla and Rodan are next door. <laughs> so the fight ramps up between uh, Godzilla and Rodan and uh, uh, <laughs> the Muppets. <laughs> look at Godzilla. They're, they're... And look at Rodan. <laughs> He's got like uh, Groucho Marx eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> this Rodan. They kind of re relax that a little bit and destroy all monsters. But in any case, uh, and now we get into the, the kitty sticky stuff. Uh, Godzilla beats Rodan down with his tail. Rodan grabs his tail in his beak and he's like, ah! he's looking around. Like, what the hell? I going to start throwing rocks. Godzilla starts picking up rocks yeah. and pelting him with it. That, and that's next. They do the, the, the tennis match. This was the yeah. first movie that they did that. And they also did it in uh, uh, Ibira, the, the sea monster as well. So, um, uh, the general, uh, the general, <laughs> the doctor and his crew and, and the princess and, and the Shindos, uh, they, they're in a car and the people are like, oh, Dan and uh, Godzilla are fighting right up above the thing there. And uh, uh, the princess says, Mothra is coming. And so they all get out of the car <laughs> and walk toward the action, of course. You got to watch, yeah. So <laughs> Mothra's heading in. Mothra's fast, by the way. <laughs> that was some fast swimming. Um, and Mothra's watching as Godzilla and Rodan play tennis. <laughs> yeah. There it is. There they go. Rodan's just pick, throwing it right back at him. It's landing on his feet. Rodan laughs. You can actually see Rodan laugh. And and Rodan laughs again when Godzilla gets sprayed with the webbing from, from Mothra. And, yeah. then Rodan, and then Rodan gets sprayed with it. And Godzilla laughs. And the kids are having a wonderful time eating popcorn and watching this film. <laughs> Again, at, after this, they decided let's just market to the kids, and, and they started doing Ultraman on TV, and they market him to the kids. That was their market at yeah. that time. But unfortunately, you know, it, it didn't work out well in 1975, and they ended up ending this, the the whole thing for ten years before bringing Godzilla back, and uh, and there you go, that next generation. Uh, so now. <laughs> they've opened the box, <laughs> let the girls breathe a little. <laughs> um, and they are, they are translating monster talk uh, for the group. <laughs> and it's, you know, hysterical. It's, Godzilla well, and Rodin, they don't want to fight for mankind. Mankind has never done anything for them. Oh, Godzilla, what language? <laughs> I, I swear to God, this is, this is what was in the dub and, and in the, uh, the credits for the, the Japanese version. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I love Godzilla's vacant stare in the outer space in this. Godzilla looks completely stoned here. Man, I need another blunt. <laughs> and Rodan's head's just going from side to side. There you go. again. That was fun. <laughs> um... <laughs> So now Malamud and his group uh, drive across the bridge in their car. Somebody's like, hey, don't go over there. The, the monsters are coming. <laughs> and then, of course, they go over the bridge. And that's when King Ghidorah shows up. <laughs> and King Ghidorah blasts the top of the mountain. And uh, we have the very afraid uh, police force there. <laughs> Ghidorah blasts the top of the mountain. And uh, there's a big avalanche. And it just kills all of Malamud's men. Malamud survives, though, amazingly. And and not only does he survive, but he steps out of the car with a rifle. <laughs> with an assassin rifle. So not only is he not stunned by the fact that, you know, the, the, these rocks fell down on the car and killed all the other guys, 
but he he is ready for action. <laughs> he steps right out of the car with the assassin rifle. The assassin rifle is all you've been put together. He's ready to go. Yeah. And he's still got the cool sunglasses. <laughs> and he didn't lose his sunglasses. Didn't lose his Very trades. Good. Very good. So, um, King Ghidorah uh, uh, lights down. <laughs> lights down in the village. Uh, there. And uh, uh, again, this is how they save money. You know, uh, we've destroyed a little bit of city now. Now we're going to move to the country. <laughs> this is how we save money. Uh, so they, the monsters are going to fight in the country. Now, uh, Mothra is not getting anywhere with Godzilla and Rodan. So Mothra decides to fight uh, King Ghidorah, King Ghidorah uh, by, by him, himself, herself. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a man or a, a male or female. Itself. <laughs> it's a worm. <laughs> Itself. There you go. Itself. It's a caterpillar. It's a caterpillar. Uh, so he he trudges off, and uh, they're they're starting to fight again. And they watch him trudge off, though. Like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, the little guy's gonna go off and do his own thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you gotta admit, yeah, the, the, again, King Ghidorah is pretty impressive as far as you know the monster design, and uh, they did some pretty cool stuff. Uh, with his uh, effects, you know, with the lasers and everything, um, destroying, you know, stretches of village and that uh, that structure at the front there in the foreground, he destroys that, which is kind of cool. So again, they knew how to make it work, even though, you know, they were on a budget. <laughs> I guess they probably spent most of the money on the costume. <laughs> And, and paying the wife of the actor that had to sit in there like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there, there's Mothra going off. There, There's the, the structure I was talking about. He was tearing up. Yeah, the, uh, the, Mothra the, is, is going off. Yeah. And they're watching him go like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So Nothing. now Mothra is, is sacrifice. That's what Mothra stands for. Sacrifice. Anytime Mothra's in a movie... He's going to make some kind of sacrifice. Yeah. Usually, yeah. usually he loses his life. And this one, he actually ends up he ends up living at the end, even even though he gets his ass handed to him by King Ghidorah here. Yeah. <laughs> King Ghidorah zaps him all over the place. We get reaction shots from sh the Shindos. Oh! 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 Yeah. Yeah, you kind of feel bad for Mothra. Yeah, he, gets little, he gets tossed around. <laughs> He gets zapped. His, his ass gets zapped all over the place. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It really does. But but again, it makes it makes the other people and the other monsters feel bad for him, you know. So it worked. Godzilla comes around the corner in a second here, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute! You're picking on that little guy? <laughs> you can almost hear him say it." Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> By the like way, you're picking, on, you're picking on our friend. Only we can pick on our friend. <laughs> picking on the old guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, that ain't that ain't right. I mean, they do like to fight. <laughs> so here he's getting zapped again. Okay, here comes Godzilla around the corner, and he looks down and he's seeing Mothra get his ass zapped across a couple of huts. <laughs> now, anytime you see Godzilla do that in a movie somebody's going to get their ass handed to them. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the Godzilla move right there that says, okay, you've opened up a can of whoop ass right now. <laughs> yep. You've opened up a can of lizard, uh, radioactive lizard whoop ass. <coughs> yep. <laughs> so there it is. That's it. He does it. So Rodan and him are moving in. They've decided, hey, we're going to help this little bug... <laughs> This little <laughs> caterpillar take uh, take on this bully. Because King Eater really is a bully. He really is. I want yeah. you to do the reaction sh to do the, the reaction shot next to him. The reaction shot next to him? Next to yeah, Godzilla. You were, imi you were imitating him. Yeah, like that. Like you, you see what you see, do what he's doing. Yeah. No, like you were <laughs> imitating. <him>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
that's the second sound he makes. I guess he kind of trails off at the end. <laughs> so yeah, they're ready to they're ready to take on this boy and take him out. <laughs> uh, so Ghidorah uh, uh, zaps Godzilla in the stomach <laughs> and in the face. Uh, and luckily, you know, it just kind of, you know, it, it tastes him a little bit, but he's okay. It doesn't really, it doesn't really affect him all that much. And uh, uh, later, zaps him in his private regions. <laughs> it's coming up. He not only zaps him below the belt, but he zaps him in the ass, too. In his butt. All right. So, uh, Ghidorah knocks Godzilla through uh, a nice little... Um, bridge there uh and then he sets the forest on fire around him and then rodan comes in and kicks Ghidorah's face <laughs> so Ghidorah takes off godzilla's just getting up he's like oh, okay all right you're gonna pay for that hey where are you going <laughs> come come back here you <laughs> going after that radon uh, character uh so he chases after rodan I want to say they reuse this in, in Destroy All Monsters, but I'm not sure if I'm right or not about that. In any case. Um, and then Godzilla puts his tail out for Mothra to... I'll, I'll take you up the cliff, buddy. So again, strictly for kids but at this point. So uh, King Gitter is going after Rodan. Rodan does one of his supersonic turns that, uh, that no other aircraft can do. And just spins and, and goes head on into King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah. Just, but, and, I, and I, I guess he has a really hard head with those two horns there. <laughs> kind of like a ram. Because <laughs> uh, he just kind of shakes it off and, and you know, and flies. <laughs> gets up. Uh, King Ghidorah uh, gets up, starts zapping towards. Uh, Rodan. Rodan hides behind a rock and I have a nice, nice little cute shot of him peeking around the rock, you know, for the kids. And then God, Godzilla comes and starts throwing rocks again. Again, King Kong throws rocks. Godzilla is supposed to use his fire breath. But anyway. Yeah. That's 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 the other thing. It's like why didn't why didn't Godzilla fire at him with his with his laser breath with his fire breath? He never did that. It's like I, they, you know, he's just throwing rocks and doing all this other stuff. It's like throwing rocks minute. and punching his head. The, the only time you see him fire his breath is when he blows up the ship. But right, and yeah. when he's he's trying it on Rodan, Rodan but it's, it's not Rodan. But you know, Oops. I. Don't know. This show juices my yeah. phone so quickly. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, I, for no reason <laughs> at all, uh, the princess ends up on a, a ledge somewhere. <laughs> and Shindo has to go looking for her. She just takes off. And she, go, she goes on a ledge. And Malamud amazingly finds the ledge directly across from her somehow. I, this guy is really good. Yeah. <laughs> He's really good at what he does. Well, I know the press is going to go there, and I'm going to go here. And so, and he's got his rifle ready. So he shoots Shindo. <laughs> she wants me to move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he shoots Shindo. Shindo can't shoot back at him now because he's been shot in the arm. Um, the princess falls and hits her head. And uh, that's when the Martian uh, goes away. She becomes the princess again. It's a, it's like a kind of a, a, a what do they call that amnesia kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, a King Ghidorah, uh, one of his one of his lasers zaps the top of the mountain, and the same damn thing happens to Malaba twice now. Lightning <laughs> struck twice in the same place. <laughs> and he gets a big boulder comes down. And, ah, catches the boulder and he takes it down with him. Yeah. And he's gone. He ain't yep. surviving that one. Yeah. The agent. Can't shoot for shit. <laughs> Misses every <laughs> shot. Guy gets taken out by a boulder. Taken out by a boulder. <laughs> it could happen in a Toho it, film. It, it could happen. It could happen. In a Toho film. In Toho scope. 
Uh, so yeah. uh, King Ghidorah was zapping Godzilla in his nether regions uh, earlier there. Uh, yeah. And then Godzilla turns around and he zaps him in his butt. He's like, oh, man, yeah. you are mean. Yeah, yeah, see, he's grabbing his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you are mean, King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah. <laughs> King Ghidorah. Um, so, he's zapping me so, in my yeah. butt. Malamud's gone, and, and, and the other people find them amazingly. And again, they're like down, like two ledges down, and these other guys find them and, and pull them up. So uh, the fight uh, gets crazier, um, and uh, Mothra starts shooting the the the, uh, the webbing, and Rodan is like, hey, get on my back. <laughs> you can almost hear him say it. <laughs> you know, very, very expressive Rodan. Yeah. Uh, Mothra gets on his back. And uh, Godzilla holds King Ghidorah in place while Mothra sprays him with the uh, with the webbing because that's how Mothra took out Godzilla in the last film was with the webbing. Couldn't see, couldn't couldn't move, and uh, and there he is getting webbed up, and Godzilla uh, pulling those tails, uh, and the guy in the Ghidorah suit. God, darn it, I can't, uh, uh, can't wait for this movie to be over. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, there he is, all webbed up. <laughs> Looks like he's got four heads there. <laughs> like he, like he got another head popped out. Hey, <laughs> so little puppet heads trapped in, trapped in <laughs> webbing. <laughs> they actually started going more and more puppet with these films as I mean, because they threw Manda in there. Manda's completely puppet. The Kamakuras, the Kamakuras are pretty completely puppet. They're marionettes basically. Uh, uh, um, uh, I want to call him Spiga. That was my favorite name for him as a kid, but it, it was something else. The, the spider. Ah, anyway, uh, Kamunga, Kamunga. <laughs> Kukamunga. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was all puppet puppet work um in any case godzilla throws his ass out of the neighborhood and uh, king Ghidorah just keeps on flying godzilla's still throwing rocks at him get the hell out of here <laughs> get off my planet <laughs> bastard <laughs> Ghidorah flies yeah. away i ain't I, man these guys are badasses man i zap them in the ass and they still beat my ass So the last scene, uh, last scenes we see of the princess, uh, she tells the, the doctors there and he's like, yeah, once you got hit on the head, knock the Mars Martian right out of you. <laughs> Something like that. And she looks over at Shindo and she's like, you want a job? You can be my bodyguard. I know you can't shoot very well, but I like you. You're cute. You're pretty. You're cute. <laughs> You're cute. You can hang out. <laughs> If Akika Wakabayashi asked me to be her bodyguard in a heartbeat, uh, you're uh, damn straight. I would be there. I would be saluting every morning. Um, <laughs> That's what she said. Don't let my wife hear that. <laughs> so they all waved the. <laughs> they all waved goodbye to the plane. I'm sure she saw them. Shino's got his arm in a sling. He can't wave. Sorry. <laughs> and, and from the cliff next to the airport, Godzilla and Rodan and Mothra wave. <laughs> or Godzilla and Rodan wave. Yeah. See ya. So now they're stuck with Godzilla and Rodan at the end of this film. What the hell are we going to do now? We still got two monsters. Uh, Mothra is off, off with the Shobijin off, the, off to Mothra Island. And that's the end of the film. Yep. So, um, yeah. Uh, as a kid, I did enjoy this film very much. I did love this movie when I was growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this training film, I should say. Um, again, so much... Uh, well, again, in the last 30 minutes, so much monster action. The first hour and 15 minutes, not as much. But you had a Kiko Wakamayashi. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, after this one, uh, they did Monster Zero, which brought King Ghidorah right back. Um, uh, like that one as well. Again, not as much monster action. They were they were doing more human stories. Uh, yeah. 
uh, in these films uh, wow. because, because of the special effects cost money. <laughs> yeah, the studios. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Hey. So and then then we got Godzilla and uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Godzilla versus Sea Monster first, then Son of Godzilla. But here's the strange thing: at the end of this film, Rodan and Godzilla are right there at the top of the cliff. They're they're free and and you know there's no monster island or anything at this point. You know that they're stuck with them basically. Uh, but a year later, Monster Zero, uh, Godzilla ends up at the bottom of Lake Myogen, and Rodan is in a cliff somewhere. They have to zap him out of the cliff and pull him out. The the, the Martians or the the ex Exilians, whatever they call them, the, yeah. the aliens from Planet X. The Planet X. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, what happened between this film? And, what what the hell happened? Did they go on an all night bender? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, one of the things in the earlier films, uh, especially with Godzilla, is is how he enters. It's always some impressive entrance. Like in in, in King Kong versus Godzilla, you know he's he was buried in ice in the second movie, and he comes out of an iceberg, uh, which is impressive. You know he breaks out of an iceberg uh, and attacks. Um, and in the, the the fourth one, the one before this, um, he's buried uh, under sand. And his tail comes out first, is wiggling around like a giant worm, and then he comes up out of the sand, and it's a really impressive uh, entrance. In this one, he just kind of comes out of the ocean and zaps a ship. You know, so it's not as impressive. Yeah. And again, the next one, he's just brought up by a spaceship from Lake Myogen. And in the one after that, he's just sleeping in a cave, <laughs> and they wake him up with lightning. <laughs> it's like we've run out of ideas. <laughs> They just ran out of ideas. <laughs> Come on, give the man an entrance. Come on. That, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> now, now you got to say, you know, whatever else you might say about the the, the monster verse, you know, the new one. Oh. They do give Godzilla really good, really good entrances. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Where they kind of tease him, and then it pops out of the ocean or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, one more thing that I want to mention about this film is it is the only uh, Shawa series. No, not the only one, but uh, th there's there's surprisingly no military in this film. Yeah, yeah. There's no scene where the tanks uh, <laughs> come in or the, the the you know the the rockets and and you know right. really destroy that stuff. Yeah. Um, you get, you that, that. you get that in spades in the in the one before it. Yeah. And you, you, you got the, the one general in that that conference, you know, talking about yeah, well, we have a we have a plan to deal with it, but but you never yeah, you don't see the, the tanks and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. This one uh I mean, and they could have used stock footage, you know, from previous films uh, yeah. ahead enough of it, uh, which they did later, <laughs> you know, movies like War of the Gargantua and uh and other films later uh that they made. Um, but yeah, there's surprisingly no uh, general, there's no military uh, aid in this film whatsoever. Um, and that struck me this week as I was watching it. Wait a minute. You know, there's no scene with the tanks. There's no scene with the missiles. There's no scene. Interesting. And no no military theme from Ifakubi, who, who created some really great military themes for these movies yeah. uh, over, the, over the years. So um, yeah, just a little fun fact there uh, from, from the general. So let's bring up Hazard again. Where are you, Hazard? I'm right here. I'm uh, totally prepared, you know, just taking my notes as usual, mm. learning what we got to learn, because, of course, the whole point of these training films is to learn and to prep and to get, you know, for, for when this actually happens. These are real creatures, and uh, yeah. we're your last defense against them. That's the end of the story. So basically... yeah. This proves that you can handle these big monsters sometimes without the military presence, which I thought was fascinating, really. Because, well, you know, I'm pro military, of course. He can get her as a bully, as we, as we established. Um, he was beaten by Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra in this one. In the next film, he was beaten by Godzilla and Rodan without Mothra. <laughs> and then in, in, in Gigan, he's got a partner, Gigan, and he's still beat by Godzilla and Anguilas. Anguilas hasn't won a fight. In any movie, except for, except for, uh, Guy Guy Gen, Godzilla versus Guy Gen. he always loses. <laughs> so, 
Actually, King, King Ghidorah is pretty easy to beat because he's a, he's a bully. If you just beat him a little bit, he'll just fly away. It's like, <laughs> ah, ah. So. And just throw some just, rocks at he's him. He's all talk. He's all beady beady. That's right. <laughs> That's all he is. All talk and BS. All right. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Havoc, for joining us on this one. Uh, it's a shame that we didn't get uh, Unite Godzilla fans on the show. He's always a lot of fun to to do these with. Uh, yeah. This was a nice one for him, too. Uh, yeah. I hope he's okay. Um, I hope his car is okay. <laughs> and yeah. uh, uh, with that said, um, uh, we have the last show uh, Thursday, the last show of the season. The fourth season will be over. Show number 112 which will be Jeepers Creepers. And we have uh, one of the uh, one of the actresses that was in the film is going to wow. come and talk with us. Avis Marie Barnes is going to talk with us about Jeepers Creepers, the one that started, there's like four or five of those now. I didn't yeah. realize that. I thought there was like two or three, but I, there's like four or five of them. So uh, we'll have fun doing that, I'm sure. And I'll see you on Thursday. Until then, keep an eye out for those big monsters. <laughs>